see who's in the attendees. Okay, uh, well, welcome to this hearing via Zoom of the Local Historic District Commission, and welcome to Jacinta, to uh, her new position and, and helping us out. Uh, our purpose is to aid property owners in the town in preserving and protecting the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places that are significant in the history of Amherst. Uh, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. Uh, a hyperlink to the hearing will also be toasted on the posted, posted sorry, on the town's online calendar. Uh, we require one of three certificates to ensure that new construction and most alterations of exterior architectural features in the district meet requirements. And for today's hearing, we have uh, four different projects that we're going to be discussing uh, before we discuss other things on the agenda. Um, so the hearing is open to the public and being recorded. And we'll begin with uh, Mr. Malloy uh, summarizing the applications. Hold on one minute. I'm just gonna um, make you a co-host, Nancy. All right, everyone, I'm Nate Molloy, a planner with the town. The um, the first uh, hearing is from 98 Fearing Street. It was continued from a previous hearing. I believe there's someone here. Uh, if you're here for 98 Fearing, you can raise your hand to help present. Um, they've requested a withdrawal. And since the hearing's been open, the um, board has to discuss it and, and vote on that. Um, so Charles, I'll uh, promote you to panelist. And before we begin, I... I think I'm supposed to be taking roll call when we begin. So let me just do that quickly. Uh, Nicole? Here. Uh, Greta? Here. Steve? Here. Uh, Karen? Here. And I'm Nancy and I'm here. Okay, now please begin. Hi, Charles. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Charles. Charles, Hi, everybody. You are, yeah, that's better. Okay, I'm demuted. Um, yeah, so after our last meeting, you know, we we went and talked about whether or not it made sense to try and, you know, modify a design or come up with a new design for the site. And I, I think it, at this point, the, uh, the 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 general consensus was it makes sense to withdraw this application. Um, and uh, I don't know if we'll come back with something later in a new application, but for this for, for the time being or for this, this application, we request uh, that you allow us to withdraw it. Is there any discussion of this request? Okay. Well, Charles, thank you for coming uh, multiple times to talk to us. Um, and thank you for this request. Do I have a motion to uh, accept the withdrawal? I motion to accept the withdrawal. I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion before we move to a vote? Okay. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Greta? Yes. Steve? Yes. Uh, Karin? Yes. Uh, and I also uh, vote in favor. So uh, we will accept the withdrawal of this proposal. And um, thank you again for coming to speak with us. Thank you. Thank you. So long, everybody. Short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Okay, Nate, the second uh, project. It's for 43 Sunset Ave. I know, uh, Karen, you're on the commission. If there's anyone else here for 43 Sunset, you could raise your hand. Um, if not, I can present. Don't don't I have to recruit myself? And how do I do that? Should I just go you away just, for a while? Yeah, you could just turn your video off and then... Uh, and then we'll uh, keep going. Unless Karen wants to present. Uh, she could present and then recuse herself, yes. I guess that's something that could happen. Did you want to present, Karen? So, yeah, I'm embarrassed by the fact that I kind of thought that we would not have to have an application at all because where it got put we were pretty sure it wouldn't be visible from the street. And especially since we were gonna uh, put maybe a rock there in case it was, but uh, that was my mistake. Um, and if you, I don't know if some of you were at the site visit, I think we worked so hard because we care so much about the appearance of this house. It's so special. 
uh, and at first we were kind of horrified in the winter that you could see it at all. And we talked to the to the contractor and we figured out any other way that could be done. But it's also the inside of this house. It's the house that Robert Frost lived in. The inside of the house is also kind of important and you don't want to have it in a horrible place where it's going to destroy the inside because it's very special woodwork and the way it presents. So the way it looks now, the outside lines to the front have been painted the same color as the house. And with the vegetation, uh, it's barely visible. And I really think after we put our heads together that that little compressor is in the very best place, kind of tucked away in the side so that uh, it just seemed to be the very best place. So I hope you agree with that. Thank you, Karen. So uh, we did do a site visit and I think we were in pretty much agreement that it did look fine, but if anybody had any concerns about what we saw? Yeah, I'll share my screen quickly. Uh, you know, here's the compressor unit as visible from the street. So it's been put in the location. Uh, so you could see it. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's, it's a distance from the road. So although it is visible, um, you know, it's not highly visible. And then the line set is, is here, um, can I zoom in? is uh, here and it's been painted. And so the compressor unit is over here. So it doesn't meet the uh, the standards for exclusion because it is, you know, it it is near an entry and it is visible, although not, um, you know, close to the street. And so, you know, as you get closer, this is what it looks like. Uh, but this is along the driveway, so really you're seeing it from, you know, from this is probably about the only angle you could see it from, um, from the street. Did anyone have any concerns about this? No, I think the painting of of the um on the side of the house just really, really made it blend. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree. I think it looks nice. Krita? I agree. And I think it's so far from the street, it's almost hard to see the condenser, but they also talked about um putting something in front of it. So I'm i I thought it looked nice. The house is beautiful. Uh, do I have a motion then to uh, approve this project? Uh, I'd say that um you know, the lines, the, uh, you know, linear feet of line set is enough that the commission could say as a condition that it be um, remain painted to match the house. So typically we don't get involved in paint color, but in something like this, we could, and that way, um, you know, that would just be a condition that remains on it. And, it, you know, they've done that, but it could just be something to reinforce. I saw it, I saw it before it was painted and after, and it's a huge difference. So I think that's a good, good to have on there. I have no problem with adding that to it. It certainly makes a difference to the way the house looks. And I think it looks quite nice now. Do I have a motion to uh, approve this certificate? Um, I'll make, I'll go, oh, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. I'll make a motion to include painting. OK, and uh, do I have a second? Second, I'll second. OK, and uh, any further discussion? Let's move to a vote then, uh, Steve? Uh, yes. Current, uh, uh, Greta? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And I also. So we are uh, approving the certificate of appropriateness for this house also. Nate, do you want to move to the third one? Yeah, the next one is 154 Lincoln Ave. If someone's here for that, you could raise your hand and we'll ask you to become a panelist. All right, so someone is joining. I'm just pulling up some documents. The um, this uh, sorry, my computer's having a problem opening up the images. The this project is a um, basement um, addition that requires, you know, new windows and an entry door, and so they're slightly above grade, which is why it's here, but it's not, uh, you know, there's not a lot changing to the exterior of the of the house. Uh, and I'll say that a neighbor had written a comment uh, today that said that they supported this project. And so um, I think I forwarded that on, but it came in you know, midday, so. Uh, Kama, thank you for coming to our hearing. Uh, are there, is there anything you would like to say about it? 
No, I think it's, you know, the changes are fairly subtle in terms of what would actually, given current foliage, be visible from the street, which would essentially be nothing. Um, two of them, you know, two of the windows are just replacing windows that are currently present, and uh, the door is just replacing a window. And the neighbor who abuts on the north, south side of the house is the one that wrote the letter. Those were the two windows that will be added, one of which is just going to be a replacement of the casement window. Um, I think it's all pretty minor from as you know as these things go but uh that's that's it yeah and i can share my screen in a minute sorry i just i got a new computer and it's having trouble um pulling these up so here on the if that's visible for everyone on the north side There'll be two new windows in this location and then a door here. So only visible at a you know a really tangential angle from the street. Here's what the windows would look like, a specification. So um, you know actually so can I yeah. can I correct a little bit? So those two windows that you're point that you pointed out will just be mm -hmm. replaced by exactly the same type of windows. It's oh, further right. back that um, two other windows will be replaced, but where you pointed to the door. Mm -hmm. That sort of essentially a perpendicular section is where the door will be. Yeah. Right. And then on the south side, if I can pull up um, an image. There'll be new windows uh, just on the, is it, I guess it's just one here on the south side. Yeah. So on the south side where that arrow is pointing and the other, the, the letters sort of get lost in the brick. Um, but to, just to immediately to the right of that. So stacked just below the two sets of windows there. Oh, yeah, yes, right. Yeah. So if you went by today, it's not, it's, you know, difficult to see with the planter boxes, uh, but it does, you know, require review. And I think that's really all that's changing. There will be an exterior light by the um, exit door. And so I think as part of, you know, the description and something the com commission can vote on would be, you know, um, some exterior lighting. So we've had this happen with another application where it, then it came back because lighting wasn't part of the discussion. And so, you know, Kama, if there's anything else you can think of, you know, we had, had that exchange in the permitting software, but if there's anything else you think that would happen, you know, we can, um, we could discuss it now. So, you know, there's the, uh, you know, one, there'll have to be by code a light, an exterior light, and then there'll be the door and the windows. and um, you know, as far as I know, there won't be anything else required. Nothing else. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any concerns about this project? It looks like pretty straightforward. Uh, all within what one would expect in an historical house. Um, do I have a motion to approve this certificate? My motion to approve. Thank you, Nicole. Do I have a second? A second. A second. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, then if there is no further discussion, we can move to a vote. So, um, Karen? Approve. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Steve? Yes. Frida? Yes. Uh, and I also approve. Karen, you have your hand raised. Is there something you wanted to say? Okay. Uh, in that case, we are approving your certificate of appropriateness uh, and uh, thank you for coming to our hearing. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. It's a beautiful house. I love that house. Yeah. Beautiful so, house. Yeah. Nate, do you want to bring us to this the final project that's coming before us today? This one's more complicated. Sure. Hold on a minute. Um, uh, so, yeah, there's 68 McClellan Street. There's a request to demolish the existing structure, single family house and garage, and construct a new, um, a new building. A new single family home. So the commission, you know, um, can review both the, uh, you know, changes to the existing structure, which is its proposed removal, and then also the new structure. So there's plans were submitted to show the new building in site. Um, and then if there's applicants here, they can present. Joel, you'll be asked to be promoted to panelist.
Uh, so thank you for coming, Joel. Uh, I don't know whether whether Joel wants to present this or whether you want to present this, Nate. Uh, I can, uh, Joel, you can present. I can always share the screen. Can you see me, Nate? No. We can just see a J for you. That's no good. There, there, we go. there you are. Okay, now we got you. All right, would you like to present this and tell us what your plans are for this house? I would. Thanks so much for having me today. Um, I purchased this property at 68 McClellan. We own other properties uh, in the area. Um, not with any idea as to what I was going to do with it. Um, my passion is restoring old houses, as you may or may not know. We've done many. Um, but this house is pretty far gone. Um, so it's my desire to take it down, which I've never done before. I, I, I don't tear down old houses. We usually save them. But this one's pretty far gone. Two thirds of it is unexcavated in the basement. Um, a lot of the joists are snapped. The foundation's coming in in the back. It has a really steep stairs and the second floor is probably say uninhabitable because it's so short. Um, so my desire is to take it down and build a colonial reproduction um, similar to what we did at 300 North Pleasant Street. You might've seen the designs. It's a pretty house. <clears throat> that's that's what I would like to do. I think it would fit in well. Nate, do you have some designs to show us? Yeah, let me share my screen. So here's the existing house, if that's visible for everyone. Um, uh, different elevations of what's there. Uh, here's the, you know, this isn't, this is the back porch and here's from the rear of the house. It's not, this isn't necessarily visible from the street. Uh, here's the garage and then the, um, you know, the side of the house, uh, which is visible. It no longer has the portico entry. And here's again, the garage. And so, you know, although the assessor's card lists the garage as being more recent, I actually, you know, the, you know, there are older maps and, you know, based on the block, I think this is an older structure than the eighties, um, but it's, you know, hard to say for sure. I think there's always been some outbuildings on the back of this property. In terms of what it would look like, here's an example, except for the lintels, you know, over the windows, but, uh, you know, similar um, siding, uh, you know, um, kind of overall architectural details. Uh, this is also an example of what the wall would look like in front. So on the site, there's a retaining wall. And so here's an example of that, of that material. And if we scroll down here, the plans. So, you know, they call it the light. And then these are the floor plans, which aren't, you know, it can help the commission understand it. And here are the elevations. And so really it is uh, similar to what was shown in the images in terms of siding, you know, overall architectural style and design. Uh, and then I guess there's still the site plan, which uh, if um, the streets here on this side, you know, there's a proposed walkway with stairs, the retaining wall, and then the structure. And so for the commission, you know, the, the wall is something that can be reviewed, the house itself uh, and any other, you know, exterior element or structure. I think the patio is at grade, so there's really not a lot happening that's visible from the public way. Would, would the front door face the street or does it face sideways? It would face the walk. So it'd be, this would face the street, this, uh -huh. this front. And is the garage being redone? I didn't see that on the map. No. So we do have a letter from uh, a neighbor who is unhappy about the removal of an historic structure. Um, are there other concerns that people have about this plan? Steve. Yeah, I have a couple of concerns. First, um, 
I've been in the house and it is in bad shape. It's, but at one point I talked to Mr. Greenbaum and he actually said that it was, um, it could be fixed up to be rented out. So I'm kind of con confused. I guess he must have done some further study in, in the basement. Um, my concern is the house is not architecturally distinguished, but it could be very historic. As Mr. Rosenthal points out as the example of like worker housing. And I, I know that later on today, the Historical Commission is going to be reviewing this. And I kind of feel like they are more equipped at judging whether this is really a historical structure or not. So my prep, you know, Hetty startup, for example, knows a lot more than I do. Um, if Elizabeth was here, maybe we could use her expertise, but right, and also Bruce isn't here either. So I would like to table it until we hear what the Historic Commission has to say. That's one thing. Secondly, I'm also confused. Uh, if it's a single family home, does that mean it's, uh, not that it makes any difference, I'm just curious for myself, it has four parking spaces laid out on the plans. Is that typical for a single family home or not? I, I, I just don't know. I figured there were four bedrooms, there should be four spaces. Hmm. Oh my goodness, Is there further discussion? It looked like there would be um, with the new building higher, correct? Because it almost, you were talking about the second floor not being even tall enough to stand, but then it did look like there were windows up in the attic for the new building. The roof is made out of trusses, so there would be no attic, but there would be a, a complete second floor. So would the building be taller? Yes, the building would be taller, but it's a little bit lower in the yard, so. It'll probably be a little bit taller, but it'll match the height of all the houses on the west side of McClellan Street. Okay. So I'm curious because the letter that we received suggested that you that there was enough space to actually put this building on on the adjacent piece of land that I think is also part of your your property, and that you could uh, then retain this historic structure. Would you have any interest in doing that, Joel? You can't have two houses on one property anymore. Um, you used to be able to have complementary dwellings, but you can't anymore. Um, the reason I put the proposed house on the same side is because I like that open space and I wanted to preserve it. And there's enough space on the other side for the new house. So I, I thought I was doing the best for the neighbors and for the property. And Mrs. Gordon would still have her view out the back. So this is uh, Google Street View, and so you know here's the uh, homes around it, and so you know here's an addition to a house, two-story homes. Yikes! Um, the um, there is an active water line on the property. Um, oh, when the trees were cut down. Um, so here's you know here's the other view looking um, east, and so. There is an active water line that comes across the property that would have to be relocated or moved if the structure was situated there. And in terms of keeping the house, Joel's right that um, you know um, there's no longer an allowance for having a single family home or two duplexes or a combination of two single family home and duplex on a property. And so this structure could remain as like a non-dwelling unit structure if you were to build a new house. You know, which would mean that it'd have to have like the kitchen removed or 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 something. It couldn't essentially it couldn't really be too habitable. Um, so it could be used for storage or, um, yeah. I mean, there's you know there might be a way to keep say this is an accessory dwelling unit to another house if we're relocated. But again, that um, you know, is a different kind of route that may not be what Joel's choosing. But there is, I mean, there's limited ability to to build on this lot right here. Um, and keep this as a single family house as well. Is there other discussion? Uh, Frida. I can't remember, what are you doing with the, are you keeping the garage or are you on? 
I was not planning on keeping the group. Okay. Steve? Yeah, I mean, personally, I think the new structure is an improvement. But again, I would like to see what the historic commission, I'm going to make it a motion that we weigh making a decision on this until the historic commission weighs in today. Uh, unless we, you know, we give a certificate of appropriateness and then the historical commission decides to do a one year demolition delay, does that take precedence over our certificate of appropriateness? So is that make it moot? Or what if I was going to make a motion? No, right. I think the I think the um yeah, there's two uh, parallel um, permitting paths that this is taking, and so it's going to the historical commission tonight. And so, you know, the commission could say that based on the architectural review of the house and what's being proposed, that it's appropriate, and the commission may find that it's not the historical commission. I don't think that that's um, it may be uh, different, but it's not inconsistent. So then, essentially, the certificate would. Uh, be in place and they couldn't, you know, Joel couldn't act on it. He might need to ask then for an extension after if there was a delay issued, for instance. And so I don't think that that's an, um, there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's just, that's the way it would have to work out. Um, you know, the historical commission is really looking at the significance of the structure and a little bit of what's being proposed, but really about, you know, is the structure, is it the loss of the structure detrimental enough that it should be delayed? Uh, and so I'm not sure, you know, how they'll, they'll, you know, determine that or what they'll rule on that. But um, I would say that there are attendees here. And so if we if we were going to continue it, I'd before we do that, uh, you know, we could, I think we should have public comment and then have, you know, we could have some more discussion. But I don't think it'd be, I think it'd be fine if the commission made a decision this evening, today, this afternoon in the local historic district or the historical commission made a different decision than local historic district. It's, you know, every house, every property in both districts is going to have that same situation. And so I don't, I don't think, I think it's gonna be hard to say, well, let's wait for the other because the historical commission might say, well, what, what was the local historic district going to do? I mean, we really can't have, I mean, it's, we could make a, a vote contingent on, you know, we could say contingent on historical commission approval or something. Right. But we, I think deferring one to the other is just going to keep pushing off. I would be more comfortable with that. I'm sorry. I didn't raise my hand because yeah. I don't want it to come across that we're endorsing it. You know, when we really don't have the facts, um, so, uh, you know, I'm really torn on this because I actually think it would be an improvement and Joel does great work. But on the other hand, I don't want to influence uh, the historical commission. Um, so you can, I've actually served on the historical commission. And so anyway, that would be my preference, but I, I'll yield to whatever other people think. Uh, maybe we should hear from the attendees who are also on this call. If anyone wants to make a comment, you could raise your hand and we'll ask you to unmute yourself. I don't, I'm not seeing any hands being raised. No, nor am I. So um, could we make this con uh, contingent on the decision by the historic commission? You could, or like I said, I think, you know, the local historic district is really focused on the built environment and the architectural features and the historical commission is as well, but also on the, you know, the the historical significance of the property and the structure as it relates to the town, which is different than, say, just the architecture and massing. And so, um, and it, you know, you could say that you'd allow this, you know, um, if the commission, you know, allows demolition or something, um, but you know, even so it's, I mean, there are separate processes. So like I said, you could, the commission could find something is appropriate in terms of its local historic district, but the um, historical commission might not for some other reason, uh, only related to the demolition, not to necessarily new construction. Okay. Uh, John Rosenthal would like to speak. Sure. Hi, John, you can unmute yourself. Here, okay. I'm, I'm new at this. Uh, sure. Want to see me too? Uh, you, you probably we probably wouldn't be able to see you, but you, you're we can hear you. Okay. Well, uh, I as you you probably have the uh, uh, some uh, information that I sent um, to the historical commission uh, earlier this afternoon. I I sense that because you're sort of referring to some of the things that I had brought up, and uh, the real issue uh, is uh, 
I don't object to uh, the intensification of the lot to the degree uh, that Mr. Greenbaum wants to put up a uh, uh, the house that um, is shown. Uh, but I do object to the removal of the uh, existing structure, which I pointed out is, uh, well, it's an example of, uh, uh, of really workmen's cottages, not the farmhouse that was described, but rather workmen's cottages that existed and uh, you'll notice that they've been the, taken over and added to uh, the greenies next door to this slot um, as an example of an addition that overwhelms the original uh, cottage. Uh, a good example. This remains still an example of that cottage, uh, and there's another one on Beston Street that's in good shape. Now, uh, it turns out that I've been involved in the renovation of two buildings, one of which was in dread dreadful shape in Connecticut but we managed to pull it through. And uh, uh, we, I was also involved in the renovation of my house here at 51 McClellan Street. And so I'm somewhat familiar with what can be done and what can't be done. And uh, you know, you can take a house and look at it and say, and knock it and say, this is uh, worthless. Uh, but the fact is that a family lived in this house until recently, and then um, their son lived in it until very recently. And, uh, uh, a family is still living at the house, a uh, similar house on Beston Street. And they, so that to the degree to which you were talking about headroom upstairs and this and that, um, it's it's really personal preference at that point. If people are willing to put up with what they've got, then they accept the building as it is. Uh, there's a lot of uh, improvements that can be made uh, inside, but I think that the, uh, I'm sure that this could be uh, uh, resurrected and and uh, improved and habitable uh, into the future. Uh, you pointed, I pointed out that I do not object to also a uh, the uh, uh, the new building that Joel proposes, uh, and I'm now told that well you can't do both of them on the same lot. Well, that seems to me to, to be a technicality that should be investigated. Uh, because you're dealing with an historical structure here. Uh, I think uh, you've probably seen the rest of the suggestions that I made. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, the final point was, I think, is may now be moot, that, uh, uh, that would, there would be no more structures built uh, on this uh, property other than the one proposed and the one existing. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jen. Uh, so, uh, comments from the committee, questions, comments, thoughts? I think I'm inclined to go with Steve's uh, suggestion that we table this for uh, a bit to hear what the Historic Commission has to say about this building. I think uh, we're open to this new structure if they think it's not significant, but if they think it's significant, and since you yourself have interest in uh, historic structures, then uh, we would wanna work with you on making this habitable. But, uh, Karen. I like a lot the fact that Joel wants to keep the, uh, the lot next to it open. I think that's, really a wonderful thing for the neighborhood. Um, so I, you know, I really appreciate what Mr. Greenbaum wants to do with it. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't seem, it, it seems like, like the historical commission is uh, going to really look at this and, and everything will change. They, they kind of have the power to put the whole thing on hold anyway. So I'm I'm not sure what good it would be if we just approved it. So I also tend to agree with Steve. Other comments? I guess what's going through my mind is um, kind of the purpose of the local historic district commission. Um, I'm maybe getting a little confused about like the 
historic commission deciding on the architecture as being significant or not like if they're not if they're saying that it's not significant um and then we approve for a new build for it to be demolished and a new building to come up i just am recalling the whole reason of the local historic district kind of coming into existence was because of demolishing one garage <laughs> so i'm you know i'm just trying to kind of be equitable between <laughs> every house and land that we're evaluating and trying to be consistent about it um you know i mean i've only been on um this commission for this year so i'm just in my mind trying to you know look at it as you know we've we've certainly been um against demolishing of other properties so why is this one different than being um, against demolishing other ones. I'm just trying to figure that out. I'm not saying that this one could or could not. I just don't, I, I want to be equitable, like in all of the different kind of considerations that we're having. Steve. So, you know, to be honest, I was involved in this trying to enlist someone, the neighbors to uh, get them, you know, they were claiming that they wanted to buy the property. And so, I got involved in this a little bit. And uh, Nicole, the answer is like, I talked to some people, a guy who lives in the neighborhood, who's a Dan, who's a carpenter, and he said, look, it's beyond repair. And that's why I think it may be unlike the garage, which at that time was fine. I mean, it stood, it was in perfect condition. There's no reason for it to take, you know, there was no reason for the, them to bring it down. Just like the other garage at 98 Ferry, I stood for 150 years and then suddenly was on its last legs. Um, but I've heard different things about whether this is, you know, recoverable, you know, or not, even from Mr. Greenbaum. And so I, um, and demolition is such a drastic, as you say, such a drastic course to take that I personally just don't feel comfortable making that decision without people, like, without like someone like Hetty Startup weighing in not whether it's architectural. I and mean, I guess what Mr. Rosenthal says, it is architecturally important because it's a certain kind of building, but I'd also like to know, you know, really how historic it is in terms of who lived there and, and that kind of thing, which is what the, hist I think we do the architecture more than the historic commission. Uh, but anyway, I hope I'm not confusing you more than before. Yeah, no, I was going to jump in and say that, you know, for the local historic district, it really is about the built environment. And so, you know, um, if we're looking at the proposed structure, you know, is it uh, compatible and consistent with the architectural styles in the neighborhood? Is its massing and scale and detailing, uh, location to the street, setback, um, those kinds of things? You know, the historical commission looks at whether the architecture is, say, significant into, to a certain time period or history of the town. You know, did, is the site or the property or its owners... Uh, is there some, you know, significance there in terms of the broader community or the region? And so, you know, as part of the packet was the inventory form um, that was updated when this was um, a local historic district. And, you know, the architectural description is pretty minimal, you know, a one and a half story traditional style farmhouse, simple design with central door capped by a freestanding portico flanked by two windows. Um, and then for the historical narrative, it was more of just a owner um, chronology, right? There wasn't any mention that, um, you know, there's something significant about this, you know, you know, that it was, you know, it was sold a number of times and certain things happened with the owner, but it wasn't. Um, so the commission will take this and, you know, if they've done their own other research and say, okay, why, you know, is this enough to issue a delay, right? Is the loss of this structure um, for the neighborhood and the town and the region, is there a detriment? For me, the local historic district is saying, well, is the what's being proposed to be in its place, is it consistent with, you know, the architecture and style and detail of the neighborhood? Is the is the current house um, enough, you know, architecturally significant, not, you know, say historically significant, but just the, its architecture, that it shouldn't be torn down. And if you say no to that, then you don't go on to the next piece. But if you say yes, that the house could be torn down because, you know, it's not... Um, um, you know, say it's not a, 
such a unique example that it needs to be preserved. Then you, you look at the new structure was being proposed and you could say, well, yes, I like that or no, it doesn't fit because it's too tall, it's too massive, it's you know something. And so it's really about the built environment, not kind of its social or political or historical relevance. And, and it might be a nuance, right? Or splitting hairs to some people, but that's the difference between local historic district and historical. Okay, thank you, that helps. Sorry, Karen, I think you had yeah. your hand raised, yeah. Karen. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the way it looks right now is this tiny little cottage uh, in a great big lot, and it's going to be replaced by a, a much more beautiful, probably architecturally keep it in keeping with the neighborhood, but it's going to kind of upgrade the neighborhood to have, you know, it's going to go from a ramshackle little cottage to a uh, a beautiful house which historically fits in there it is going to change the neighborhood but you can't ask somebody to buy this and if it has to be torn down to put up another little teeny ramshackle cottage so my feeling is that um you know structurally it kind of does fit in i do think that you know four bedrooms four cars the driveway is going to change it a little bit um Probably there are going to be four individuals living, so it'll change. But structurally and architecturally and visibly, I think it's, yeah, it's a goal. It'll probably upgrade the neighborhood. Uh, Frida. I was concerned about the parking, too, and I know Joan... Um, John Rosenthal talked about the four parking. I wondered if they could be where the garage is now behind the building and not so visible from the street. They are behind the house. They are. Oh, I'm gonna look again, sorry. Um, so yeah, I'll share my screen. Is, is the site plan visible? Yeah. yeah. So here's the proposed driveway in the parking behind the house. Here's the existing garage here. So the parking would be tucked oh, Okay, in. sorry, I'm sorry. I misread the blueprint. I think I was looking at the house, the 300, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. So good, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, do I have a motion for how to proceed? I, I would like the Historic Commission's information before I feel like I could kind of make a decision. So I would like to just delay a response, <laughs> whatever your technical, <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, well, we'd have guess... to, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nate. I'll say we'd have to continue it to a time and date certain. Um, you know, the commission is meeting this evening. I mean, it could be as simple as, you know, um, a week or two. Um... Steve? Yeah, I understand there's a time element in this and I, I um... Can, I, how about if we just like say that we approve, you know, we grant a certificate of appropriateness contingent upon the historical commission's decision. I don't want to stand, like I said, I'm torn on this. I actually think it's an improvement. But on the other hand, I want to represent Mr. Rosenthal's concerns. And I, it's such a drastic thing to take a, a structure down that I don't want to do it lightly. And I want to make sure personally that every consideration has been taken before we do something like that. Uh, so, you know, what about a motion saying that we would grant a certificate of appropriate? Now, are we granting two certificate of, a, are we granting a demolition? Is that a, require a certificate of appropriateness and a certificate of appropriateness for the proposed structure? Or what it'd be, we... yeah, it'd be like one in the same. So it'd be, you know, okay. for, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to stand in the way. I just, like I said, I just want to make sure that we've done all our due diligence before we make such a drastic decision, particularly since I've heard conflicting things about the building, the durability of the building itself. So I would like to move, if you guys are fine with it, that we would grant a certificate of appropriateness contingent upon uh, the Historic Commission's decision, uh, decision. I mean, I would have liked it if the Historical Commission had weighed in on this before it came before us. Uh, it seems kind of weird that we're seeing it before them, but it is what it is. Uh, do I have a second for that motion? 
I have a second. I am a second. Thank you. Okay, uh, I gotta go do a school. Go. Okay, is there more uh, discussion before Nicole disappears? All right, let's take a vote. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Greta? Yes. Steve? Yes. Karen? Yes. And I also uh, agree. I think this is a, a good way to go. So this is uh, going to be contingent on the decision tonight uh, from the Historic Commission. Uh, and assuming that they think this is acceptable, then uh, you can move forward. So thank you very much for coming uh, to our meeting and for presenting this. And uh, we'll be interested to see how this proceeds. Thank you so much for your time. I mean, this it's not particularly easy for me either, quite honestly. But I personally think it's for the best. I think it it made the decision easier having seen other things you've done to historic houses around town. So uh, we know that you're not just knocking down houses left and right. Oh. Uh -huh. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so uh, I think the next item on the agenda is the East Amherst Historic District. Uh, can I weigh it? Uh, do I need to raise my hand? <laughs> I just, uh, uh, Nate, I need your help. Yeah. Sure I got the forms about the, I'll come in whenever you want. But before I can fix, um, um, put the bid out, I guess, I, I you have to pretty much tell me, is that housing one that you sent me, is like 10 pages and I know I can use the criteria section, but I don't know what to put before the criteria section. So if you could just meet with me for half an hour, I could, I'll be happy to do it on your schedule. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty busy the next like week and a half. So it could be, um, you know, like, yeah. But yeah, so any, yeah. yeah, so anyways, you know, with the, the money becomes available July 1 and what Steve and I have been talking about is you know, we have to go through some public procurement to hire a consultant. We can't just sole source it for the amount of funding. And so we're, we need to come up with a scope of work and, um, you know, get three quotes from consultants. And so, you know, we'd ask only who we'd want, but then we take the lowest qualified um, response. And, you know, in that, in the scope, we'd want to outline everything we'd want the um, consultant to do. And one would be actually um, updating all the inventory forms. That's a fair amount of work. I mean, I guess, so part of the discussion was, you know, the roles of the commission and consultant. And I mean, we could split that if we think it's going to add to cost or have the consultant do all of it, but Mass Historic will want that. So, you know, what has happened in the past when we've had a study committee, uh, it's been, you know, a volunteer effort to really research and then update all the inventory forms. And it is it is quite a bit of work. Um, and so, I, you know, it's something that, you know, we could uh, write into the scope that, you um, the consultant does the research and staff and can help take pictures and create the map and other things. It's, you know, I think, I think to me, that's maybe one point of discussion in terms of the scope, but everything else would actually be the consultant. You know, we'd want them to prepare the report according to mass historic guidelines, um, attend a few meetings, submit it, get feedback, and then submit the second report, the final report. And so I don't know, Steve, if you have ideas on that. Yeah, no, I have two people that, I mean, I have Chris Skelly, who's interested, who used to be the head of the mass historical commission you can't get any higher than that and then i uh talked to sean mcwilliams who was uh, a master's student who assisted us when we did the lincoln sunset he was terrific he wrote the uh, historical significance section of the report which was like 12 pages long and i thought it was am amazing but also i mean i'm hoping that it will be sean because sean worked with uh, i don't know if you guys were at town meeting when i made my presentation but I had a PowerPoint presentation that Sean worked with me extensively on. So I would love to have Sean back again because in addition to um, doing the historical research, which he's done before, he would also help write the significance section and he would help me do a PowerPoint presentation, which I know ultimately we would have to present before town council. But unfortunately, I, we can't because it's a, we can't just hire him. So, uh, um, it's kind of a naughty problem for me. So, yeah. And then uh, that, uh, 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 Elizabeth Sharp said that she knew a third person that she really highly recommended, and she sent the proposal to him as well. So I'm waiting to hear back from, from him. 
But the last thing, Nate, would you post it? on? Because Chris said that he would usually look where they're posted, but you wouldn't have to post. No, it's not required to be posted. So this wouldn't be like publicly advertised in the newspaper or on the website. We'd really just solicit quotes from consultants that have been pre-identified. And so um, it's not a public, it's public in that we're not sole sourcing it, right? But it's not public in the nature that it's um, available to anyone. I mean, we could open it up to anyone. A, could you help me get a third one if Elizabeth doesn't pan out? Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. All right. Uh, you and I will uh, sure. email and I'll come in. I'm going away next week too. So it doesn't, it's not, there's no rush. Sure. And I'll come in whenever is best for you. And then, yeah, I guess some of it would be for the commission members to think about, you know, uh, you know, there is a big process for the um, local historic district. So one would be studying the area. And then once you determine an approximate boundary, you mail all the property owners to get to do a survey and to have a meeting. And then based on those results and, you know, uh, historic information, you refine the boundaries if necessary. And then at the same time, you're researching um, the individual properties and updating the forms and also, you know, researching kind of the general area of the town that, you know, the neighborhood and you write a preliminary study report that gets sent to Mass Historic, and it's pretty it's it's pretty lengthy, um, yeah. and then they comment on it. It could take a few months, and then when we get that back, the idea hopefully is that the consultant would then help us finalize the report. We might have to have we'd have to have another public hearing, and then present it, like Steve said, to um, you know. I mean, the planning board might want to see it, and you know, some a border committee, and then we'd go back to um, in council, and then we go back to Mass Historic. So it. You know, it could be, you know, quick is like eight months, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but like four it, they, years left. Or, yeah. Mass Historic says that a, a quick turnaround is a 10 to 12 months. So it's a process. Well, that's what thing, happens when you're involved with historical people. <laughs> the last thing is I, I, I took both uh, Chris and um, Sean on a driving tour of the area. And I went down Spalding and they both were going, geez, the houses on Spalding are terrific. So I don't know, you know, just the laziness. I was thinking that we would use the significant section, the historical narrative from the national uh, district uh, application, which is what, when they did the Dickinson um, local historic district, they didn't even do anything. They just submitted the national historic district um, application as their application. So I was hoping to save work, you know, just to use that as, or, you know, I was just going to cut and paste what we had, but if we include Spalding, we, we can't do that. I'd have to, we'd have to yeah. add the historical history of Spalding as well. So, uh, do you guys want to like go back to Spalding and take a look and see? Uh, I mean, the whole street are really old houses. And I don't want to over, and those, these are all single family homes uh, with you know, people living in them. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what you guys have to say about how many homes on Baldy might be included. I'd be happy to go back. I have been down Spalding and I agree with yeah. you. They're really, they're a lot of nice yeah. and very old homes and they're still intact for the most part, at least from the mm -hmm. outside. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really good idea to include Spalding. Yeah, it could be that we include it and then the, um, you know, whether it's just that they're a different time period or architectural style, I mean, we could leave that to the consultant, right? That we, that our a general um, starting point might be that, right? We, it's a little bigger. And then they, you know, Mass Historic asks how you've justified the boundaries in terms of, you know, adjacent properties or not. And so, you know, it could be that like the railroad tracks and, you know, like Hedro uh, Lane to the north that there's like, you know, an amethyst um, brook that there's kind of, natural geographic features or other features that help kind of define the boundary. And so we can work within that. And then, you know, um, so I'm, I'm okay, including Spalding Street too. I, you know, and I think it's worth someone investigating, you know. Okay. All right, well, the next step I think is Nate, you giving me a little guidance sure. about how to the bid form and, and then we'll go from there. All right, yeah, I was looking, I, I was like, did we, I was like, oh, we hired someone before, but I actually don't think we did. And so this is the first time we've hired someone for a local historic district, right? No, no, you TLL architects. They they were that was through a grant and that was just for inventorying. It wasn't for um oh, okay. it wasn't for a district nomination. It was just they did a lot of inventory forms for the town. So they did a great job. Yeah, I know they, they I know. 
did you bid that out to them or yeah we it was a grant through mass historic and they yeah, yeah they're actually they were from portland maine and i was shocked that they were interested but they came and yeah, i thought they did a really good job yeah they don't exist anymore i talked to one yeah. of the principals unfortunately okay i'm done sorry Okay, so uh, are there other things to talk about for the East Amherst study? I don't think so. I th yeah, I think getting the boundary is kind of the first step because then that you know identifies number of properties, and um, so we can always have it on the next meeting, um, and then we can have you know a draft scope and everyone could look at it. Um, so that could, that could be a goal. So Nate, what's happening? Uh, moving on to unanticipated items, what's happening with the uh, changing our um, our bylaws so that it includes parking and yep. is that moving forward? Yeah, there is. Um, well, I I'll bring the language back. Yeah, I think it's. I thought you know last time we had it pretty well established. There's one other piece we're having um, looked at. Uh, there's another uh, section or two of the bylaw, and so last fall I thought there was kind of a general. Um, I thought that you know the town town manager, town council is going to look at all of the general bylaw and we're going to fold this in. And I'm not sure where that process is, but there's like one or two other sections that might need updating. And so, but I, I can bring it back. I think it's, um, you know, it was, like we said, it was like six or more parking spaces um, off the, you know, whatever the language was, but that's, you know, essentially what it was is, um, you know, six designated parking spaces. And so, um, you know, it seems like the building commissioners looked at it and thought it was, you uh, you know, understandable and easy to enforce. And so that's, that's, you know, I thought it was all set. Good. Okay. Uh, are there other unanticipated items that people would like to discuss? Oh, Bruce has joined us. My apologies. I got an hour out. I've been, I've been reading the materials and preparing for the meeting. And uh, uh, somehow I finished my habitat meeting thinking that it was, a, I don't know. And then I was planning to join in a few minutes, and then I realized it was four o'clock and not three o'clock. My apologies, my profuse apologies. Rita? Can I just get off topic? I was I saw my son-in-law in Seattle, and he told me that he asked if I knew you, Bruce, and he said he, you were his idol when he was in um, school to be an architect at MIT. His name's Knut Brinkman. Oh, good Lord. You know, so anyway, you know. I, that's all. I don't want to get off topic, but I wanted to tell you that Google. he admired you so much. And vice versa. He was an extraordinary young man. I'll take some digestion on that one. <laughs> but anyway, back to. Um, back to uh, so uh, public comment. Is there any public comment? We've got two people still uh, participating. Well, then let's uh, set up our next meeting date. So right now there's no, um, interestingly enough, there's no uh, pending applications. So typically I'd say, you know, we'd want to meet so many weeks out so we could have a legal ad, but there's not anything right now um, you know, I mean, something may come up in the next two weeks, but there's nothing that's pressing in terms of scheduling a hearing. Okay. Uh, do you do you want to not schedule a he hearing and wait and see whether something comes in, or how do, would you like to proceed? Uh, it's up to the. I mean, if we want to talk about East Amherst a little bit and review the parking, I mean, we could meet um, in a few weeks just to do that and have it just be a public meeting, and then we could have something. You know, it could be a quick meeting. Um, like on, for instance, like on the twenty fourth, like could you know would it would we have an hour meeting just to discuss a few things? Uh, I I think uh, at least one member has something going on on the twenty fourth, so uh, <laughs> that's not going to work. Um, how about how about the following week, July first? Is that possible? I'm actually out of town that week. Uh, or July eighth, maybe. Are people around? I can do July. I can do yeah. July 8th also. I'm okay. Yeah. Let's, let's set it up for July 8th then. 
Sure, at three. Uh, is that good for people or would people prefer sure. to meet at four? Okay, three o'clock. Yeah. All right, that sounds good. Yeah, I'll get that. And if we need, I think that would give us enough time too if applications came in that could then double up uh, as well as a um, for a hearing. Okay. Good. Well, as always, Nate, thank you for all your support. Uh, and Jacinta, uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. Along with Nate, we don't want Nate to leave us. Not right away. Good. Uh, then we I will, will uh, have a motion to adjourn. Bruce is here in time to, to make the motion to adjourn. <laughs> You're muted, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be interested to hear how you uh, all proceeded. I thought this was going to be a very long meeting, but uh, apparently not. Well, had um, you been here, maybe we would have continued <laughs> to discuss it. Okay. Um, uh, I move to adjourn. <laughs> uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. okay. Uh, those in favor, Karen? Aye. Uh, Greta? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Steve? Yes. And I say we adjourn. Uh, thanks, everyone. Right. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.